topic of uh, gravity and falling, there's one other instance of stupid things that I have seen, and this is what prompted the whole panel, and I stuck it second because I wanted, already wanted to get through that derivation so this would make more sense. But uh, this is something I'm sure you've all seen, and again, I could not find a clip because I know I've seen it in several animes, but never remembering a specific instance that really jumped out at me. And if there was, it was probably in one of those series of 150 episodes, and I didn't want to rewatch the whole thing just to find that one clip. So I made my own. Um, and I don't have a really good microphone, so I couldn't dub this on my computer, and the sound doesn't seem to want to work anyway, so I'm just going to dub it on site. <laughs> I'm Sakura, but Sasuke is a cock blocking bastard. I'm falling. I like to shout blah 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 blah. Sasuke says blah 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 blah. <laughs> in case you can't tell what this is trying to pick, they just fall forever and they're talking and talking. And it takes like 30 seconds. So if you were falling for that long, how fast would you hit the ground? How big of a crater would you make? <laughs> This was the original question for this panel, and it actually turns out to be one of the lamest ones because of what we just talked about. Oops. Let's try to you. Since we already talked about terminal velocity, what ends up happening is they're going to bottom out. They're going to get to a constant speed, and they're not going to continue speeding up. For humans in free fall, um, the highest speed you can hit, kind of spread eagle falling, is about 200 miles an hour. Still, I don't want to hit the ground at that speed, but uh, it's not really that fast in comparison. After three seconds, you've hit 50% of that speed. After eight seconds, you're going 90% of the speed. And after 15 seconds, you're going 99% of that speed. So for Naruto talking for a half hour, he'll probably be really close to 200 miles an hour when he hits the ground. Probably actually a little bit higher since he's not spreading when he's like. <laughs> the highest recorded speed of any human ever skydiving was 614 miles an hour by someone going head first. Um, which is, yeah, really freaking fast. He did it from high altitude where the atmospheric density is even lower, so you can actually get faster there than at low altitudes. So, uh, yeah, that was really disappointing. I had to answer this question because I put it in the pamphlet before I actually did the research and the math and everything. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, the question that was in the pamphlet is really lame, but uh, I can still answer how big is the crater. <laughs> the equation! Um, here I basically just define all the variables. Uh, I am not sure how good this equation really works because this factor of 1.3 here in the brackets is, um, is what's called the uh, crater collapse uh, variable. It's basically telling you how fast everything's going to fall back in before it really settles. Um, the 1.3 value is supposed to be for craters larger than 4 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> this, this equation is designed for comets and meteors and asteroids. Just Reaming the Earth, not orange ninjas. <laughs> um, so I think that should actually probably be a lot smaller, just because something a small crater is not going to collapse as quick as a big one. But anyway, um, I gave you all the numbers, so if you want to like take a picture and calculate it yourself, just to be like, I calculated the crater for Naruto. Um, go ahead. If not, I'll give you the answer. It makes a crater this big. <laughs> <laughs> All that freaking power in Naruto Mix created this big, so pretty freaking pathetic. Um, and again, that should be a lot smaller if I probably chose the greater collapse factor. So okay, I've done my promise for the um, pamphlet, so on to the fun stuff. <laughs> I can't find a clip for this one either, and I ran out of time to animate stuff, but uh, I'm sure we've all seen it. Somebody takes a sword and a big shockwave goes out and kills everything. Uh, I know. It's happened in Bleach. I know I've seen it with uh, Inuyasha and his cousin Kizu or Windstar in uh, Inuyasha. I mean, many series have this idea. So uh, I'll ask you guys: Is this plausible? Hell no! 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 Hell um, here's some videos. The first question we have to ask is, can you make visible shock waves? So, yeah, yeah. yeah here's some videos of that. This is an F14, and it does weird things. Um, I'll talk about it in just a second. And then, here's another one. This one's actually a better video because it slows down right when it passes, and you go, whoa, look at that! Whoa. Mm -hmm. Alright. Click. So 
what's happening here? This is called uh, Prandtl Glout Singularity. It's not actually breaking the sound barrier. Um, everybody that's seen this thinks it is, but it's really not. Basically what's happening is, if you've ever seen this in like a high school chemistry class, like the only chemistry I remember, <coughs> this is the um, phase diagram for water, where you have a temperature here and pressure. And basically what happens is you have a very humid atmosphere, and your um, phase for water is some here down in vapor, but as the pressure increases of the uh, shock wave coming forth through the F-14 flying through, it pushes it up, it forms a liquid, and it forms a cloud. So yes, it is possible to create a shock wave which is completely visible. The question is, will you be able to sustain it? And what would happen even if you could? Typically, these kind of shock waves only create an extra one to two uh, pounds per square inch of pressure. That's not a lot. Typical atmospheric pressure is about 15 psi. So this is not very much. It's like being a couple feet underwater. It's not going to hurt you. At five psi, um, minor damage like rattling some windows or something and popping them out of their frames might happen. And humans have withstood up to 144 um, psi overpressure without being hurt at all. So even if you could create these kind of standing shockwaves, which is the only way I can come up with an idea to rationalize these shockwaves we've seen in animes, it wouldn't do jack. Um, and even really big things, like the space shuttle re-entering the atmosphere, it only creates up to about 5 psi <coughs> overpressure. So no, it doesn't work. And also, these things are constantly traveling. A sword is done. So you can't make it travel, and it would disperse immediately. So, sword shockwaves, busted. <laughs>